story time about how my boyfriend and I got robbed for over $3,000. And I know someone's about to be like, $3,000 isn't even a lot of money. We were both teenagers and both saved up a year's worth of paychecks for this, so it was a lot of money to us. So my boyfriend and I were looking for a car that we could use for about a year or so. And we found this one guy on Facebook. And the car looked too good for the price that he was selling it at. But I got in contact, asked him if he would meet me somewhere. And then he started being super sketchy. He was like, well, I still have to do some work on it. So can you guys come to my house? So we drove an hour away to his place. And we pull up to this apartment and we drive around a few times and the car is nowhere to be seen. So he meets us outside. We go in his house. Super nice. Offered us drinks and everything. And then he goes, okay, can I have the money now? And we're like, well, we want to see the car. And he goes, you guys can see the car after you give me the money. I just don't want to get robbed. So we give him the money and he goes to the back to count it. Like for part two. Part two on my boyfriend and I getting robbed. So like I said, we gave him the money and he said he had to go to the back to count it. So I look over at my boyfriend and he's shaking his head because we already knew what was going on at this point. And as soon as I hear footsteps, I turn my head and this guy is standing there with a gun pointed in between my boyfriend and I's heads and a baseball bat in the other hand. And then he goes, okay, you guys can get the fuck out of my house now. Before we leave his house, my boyfriend's like, bro, can I at least get the money back? And of course the guy says no. So then I called the cops and my boyfriend didn't want me to call the cops because he was like, I want to handle it my own way. But I didn't care. That was money that we worked hard for. So I got on the phone with the police. We went down to the police station. We made our statements and everything like that. And then we go back like I think a week later and they show us a picture and they're like, oh, is this him? Well, apparently this guy had a lot of gun charges and everything like that. So he went to jail and had to do community service like for part three. Part three on my boyfriend and I getting robbed. So like I said, they said that he had a lot of gun charges and so he went to jail. And I think he was only in there for six months because apparently he was only a teenager. <laughs> so after he got out, it was like time for him to start paying us back. And I was so happy that I didn't let my boyfriend handle it his own way. I feel like this was the best revenge or whatever. He had to spend that whole summer doing community service to pay us back. And it's not like a fine where you can just pay that money back. Like you actually have to do community service for that money. Or I'm pretty sure that's what the cops told us. But the funniest thing is we actually saw him walking in the mall with his dad whenever we got one of the paychecks. Because we went shopping with it. And we were walking right behind him. And my boyfriend wanted to say something. And, you know, I was like, no, we already got the money back. You know, like, let's not do that. Am I the asshole for buying my cousin's dream car to prove a point? I, 26-year-old female, work a corporate job at a major fast food chain. I won't say the exact title, but I don't work at an office and spend most of my time visiting and coaching stores and associates. Because of this, my family seems to be under the impression that my job is a loser job, despite me making well over $150,000 a year. I think this perception is exasperated by the fact that I'm a frugal person who doesn't tend to surround myself with expensive things. My cousin, 34-year-old male, is a physics professor at a nearby state university and has done very little to hide the fact that he looks down on my job. From what I understand, we make similar money, but he's still paying off a doctorate degree. I didn't go to college. He has a much bigger house and mortgage and two kids. I'm child free, meaning I have much more disposable income than him. For nearly two years, he's been talking about how he really, really wants a Tesla Model X and how he's slowly saving money for it. He'll joke about how much he wants it by describing how he sees it in his dreams in exquisite detail. Well, several months back while we were at my aunt's birthday party, my cousin made yet another backhanded joke about when I get a real job and make real money and it was like the straw that broke the camel's back. I was so beyond done. I went back home immediately after the party and ordered a Tesla Model X for myself, exactly to the specifications he has described. So a couple of weeks ago, I picked up my car and brought it home. I didn't tell a single soul in my family I bought it. But yesterday, I had plans to pick up my cousin's older son to babysit and I knew it was finally time. I rolled up to my cousin's house in my shiny new Tesla that I washed and polished just that morning specifically for this meetup. Needless to say, cousin was pissed. He asked me all about it with strained enthusiasm and got visibly more angry the more he noticed it was just like the one he wanted. So, in what I would assume was retaliation, he tried to make a comment about, Wow, it must have been an adventure and a half to find a bank willing to give you a loan like this. I laughed him off and casually told him I wouldn't know since I paid in cash, which is true. He questioned me, so I pulled up a picture on my phone of the title with my name on it. I think that was what broke him because he quickly ended the conversation and went back inside. But now I've been getting messages from his siblings saying how I'm a petty bitch. Even my mom said that she thought he was an ass, but I shouldn't have escalated just because I could. And while I adore my new car, getting back on my cousin wasn't as satisfying as I thought I'd be. So I'm really beginning to wonder if I am the asshole here. Am I? Story time about how I broke up my best friend and his girlfriend. 
So it was our sophomore year in high school and my best friend and I had known each other since we were like eight years old. And I've always had a crush on him. Like anytime he would get a girlfriend, I would try and break them up and it would work. Well, our freshman year of high school, he started dating this one girl. Well, when he started dating her, he distanced himself from me because she didn't like how much time we were spending together. So a few months go by and my birthday's coming up. And mind you, within these past few months, we only seen each other like twice. And he had me blocked on all social media. Well, our parents were really good friends because we lived in the same cul-de-sac. So my mom invited him and his parents to my birthday party. So at the end of my party, my friends left and him and his parents stayed. And my parents really didn't care if I drank alcohol, so we had like a whole bottle of vodka to ourselves. So we're in the basement and we're taking shots together. Well, I got him super drunk and he fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, I went on his phone and like for part two. Part two. And I was able to get into his phone because he sold my fingerprint from when we were best friends. So I unblocked myself on all social medias. And there was an ottoman pushed against the couch. So while he was sleeping, I was able to go lay next to him. So while I was laying next to him, I took a few pictures of us. And I saved them in his camera roll. And I also sent one to his girlfriend. And it was about 1 in the morning. Well, she opened it right away. And then she started going off and would not stop calling his phone. So after that, I turned his phone off. So he started to wake up and then we started drinking more and then we started fooling around and while we were doing the nasty I took a video but he didn't see it because the phone was in front of me and I had his girlfriend on snapchat so what did I do I sent the motherfucking video to her so the next day obviously he found out what happened so then he came over to my house to talk to me and I told him how I was upset that she was keeping him from me so he broke up with her and started dating me story time about my horrible toxic ex disclaimer this is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram my ex and i had been friends for three months and he asked me out i said yes because i really liked him but the relationship only lasted one month he started showing red flags really quick he would constantly try to monopolize my time if i told him that i couldn't hang out he would show up to my house randomly without even asking if he could come over it's like he was checking to see if i was telling the truth or not anytime i would be babysitting he would also show up and ask to hang out obviously i would say no because i was working he also monitored all of my social media if i posted anything about blm he would get so angry and he wouldn't talk to me. One day I get a text from him saying, I don't think this is going to work out anymore. He actually broke up with me over text. I was on a road trip with my family at the time, so I was so distracted and I thought I'd be okay. A few days later, I find out he started dating my best friend. Then he started sending me abusive text messages part two is up. My ex started sending me abusive text messages, calling me an SLUT and saying that I was stupid. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I tried to reason with him, but he just wouldn't listen. Of course, I ended up blocking him. A few days later, he showed up at my house. I asked him why he was there. He said he was just riding his bike around. I didn't buy it for one second. He made it a habit of just showing up to my house on his bike. Then he started texting me from another number. He was constantly trying to get my attention. Of course, I blocked that number as well. And I get a message from my best friend who had started dating my ex when we broke up. She asked me if we could hang out and I said yes. Talked for a few hours and we made up. She explained to me how verbally abusive he was with her too and that he was stalking her as well. But guess what? It gets worse. On top of all of that, he called my sister and started telling her that I was too fat for him, that I was unattractive, and that I didn't bring enough energy into the relationship and that that's why he broke up with me. That's when I called him and we got into a huge fight. Part three is up. My ex called my sister and told her that I was too fat for him and that I was unattractive and that's why he had to break up with me. That's when we got into a huge fight over the phone. Of course, we both said extremely hurtful things. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Like I said, he had been stalking me and sending me abusive text messages. I kept blocking him and he would keep coming back. Then again, he would show up at my house. His excuse was that he was riding his bike around my neighborhood. I told him I needed space. A few days later, I'm hanging out with my friends and there he is. Shows up totally uninvited. Everyone knew what had happened, but he still tried to talk to me. Of course, I ignored him. A few hours later, I get a ton of notifications from Instagram. Guess what? It's my ex. He started begging for forgiveness. He was trying to justify every single thing he did. There was no excuse for his abusive behavior. Not to me or my best friend. I told him to leave me alone, but he still kept sending the messages. They're starting to get to me. I know I shouldn't want to be with him, but part of me still loves him. He's the first person I've ever fallen in love with. I don't know what to do. Story time about how my husband is bullying me into getting plastic surgery. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for two years. I'm in my early 20s and we just had a baby. We're really well off, thankfully, and we have a wonderful life. All things considered, I do have a wonderful husband. He loves me, always wants to be with me, loves our daughter, and is a wonderful dad to her. He's super caring and loves my family as well. The only problem is that he's addicted to Instagram. And he follows a lot of girls that, you know, look 
fake. One day he started showing me pictures of this one girl. I will not say who she is, but just know that she's a very big influencer who claims to be all natural and totally is not. He asked me if I wanted to get some work done after I had the baby. I told him no because that wasn't even a priority of mine. I was more worried about having our daughter and taking care of her when she was first born. That's when he suggested that I should do what Kylie Jenner did. Kylie Jenner supposedly had her baby and directly after she got her stuff done. I laughed off the idea and he said, I'm serious. You see, I thought he was joking. I asked him why he wanted me to get that done. He confessed he was afraid that my body was gonna look completely different than when we first met. I was shocked because I mean, you're in love with me, not with my body. After I had the baby, he made an appointment with me at a plastic surgeon part two is up. Without telling me, my husband made an appointment at a plastic surgeon for me. Claim this is not my story time. I was sent to me on Instagram. I had told him so many times that I did not want work done on me. I told him I wouldn't go to the appointment. Then he told me that he wanted me to look like the girls on Instagram. And that he needed my body to look like it did before the baby. I was shocked. My husband had never been like this before. But his addiction to Instagram was getting that bad. He pulled out his phone and started showing me pictures of girls on Instagram. I told him those were highly edited pictures and he said I don't care. He told me that he probably wouldn't be attracted to me anymore. And that's why I needed to get all the work done on my body. I told him that I would never ask him to do anything surgical to his body for my benefit. And he told me that if I had asked him, he would do it in a heartbeat. Then he actually started showing me pictures of Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian. He told me that he knew who their doctor was and that I could go to that same doctor. I was more than shocked. I felt sick to my stomach. For those of you who may be wondering, my husband and his family own a very big company. He was born into money. For him, you can buy anything in the world. As the weeks passed by, he kept getting more irritated that I wouldn't say yes. One day he showed me a picture of me that he edited of me to look like Kim Kardashian part three's up. My husband insisted that I look like Kim Kardashian. I actually even went ahead and edited a picture of me in the shape of Kim Kardashian. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I started to cry instantly and I told him I did not want to get any surgery. He backed off because he knew he hurt my feelings, but just the following day, he asked me again. At this point, I didn't know how else to say no. A few days later, we were having a peaceful lunch and suddenly out of nowhere, he asked me what I would do if he found someone that did look like Kim Kardashian. I told him that I would straight up divorce him and that he would never see our daughter again. That's when he got up from the table and left. He basically gave me the silent treatment for two days. Finally, I told him that I would not get surgery, but that he could get me a personal trainer to work out. He said that that wasn't enough. Once again, he asked for me to consider it. Two days ago when I got home, he ordered me a bunch of clothes from Skims. He asked me to try it on and when I did, he said that I didn't look that bad, but that he still thought I should get some work done. He also told me I should get a tan. At this point, I just don't know what to do. I started a new diet in efforts to lose weight and I'm working out my butt like crazy. I will never look like Kim Kardashian or Kylie Jenner though. Should I just cave in and get the work done? Or should I just tell my husband no and suffer the consequences? I feel absolutely hopeless. Here's a story time about when I broke off my one and a half year engagement with my fiance, ex-fiance. We met on a movie set, he was playing my boyfriend, and within a week, we were already calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend. Two months into the relationship, he convinced me to move to LA with him because we both wanted to pursue acting seriously, and he was an established model already. He had worked in Tokyo and Paris as a model. Of course, I was so in love, I said yes, and I left my family, which was really heartbreaking for them. I will totally always regret that decision because I left way too soon, I was so young. We struggled for money in LA, but I decided to get a serving job, so I was making more money than he was because he was working at a movie theater making $8 an hour. Because of this, I had to pay for a lot of the bills and I even started helping him pay off his school loans. We also shared a banking account, which was terrible because I was putting in way more money than he was. I hated the apartment we lived in because I would wake up with roaches in my hair, so I decided to get a second serving job. When I asked him to get a second job as well, he said no because he was very happy at his job. Part two is a part two. So I asked my fiance if he could get a second job to help me out with the bills and he said no. I would tell my mom and sisters about the situation and they would tell me that he should definitely be helping me out more and I just would make up excuses for him and I just thought it's okay, he can work at the movie theater and I will work my two jobs. At this point, I was paying for most of the rent, most of the bills and his student school loans. Oh, $20,000, you guys and I was paying for all of that. I even got a third job because I wanted to save up to move out of that crappy apartment. Finally, I got hired at the strip club as a cocktail waitress and I was able to quit all of my other jobs. My ex-fiance was definitely happy with the amount of money I was making at the strip club. Of course, he felt absolutely no pressure to get a new job and help me out. I finally put my foot down and told him we were moving to a better apartment because I was not happy in the apartment we were in. I told him he had no right to say no because I was the one paying for everything. We found the perfect apartment and I loved it. It was absolutely beautiful and I felt so at home there. Then one night, I was sexually assaulted at the strip club. Of course, I was really affected by it. At first, he was supportive, but after a few days, he basically told me to get over it. Part three, when he told me to just get over the sexual assault that I experienced at the strip club, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that the man I was about to marry would be so insensitive. And then I just started realizing, wait, I am paying for everything. I pay for your bills, I pay for your rent, I pay for your student loans, and you're here telling me to just get over this sexual assault. It was like someone had put a mirror to my 
face and was showing me the truth. Final straw was when I told him I wanted to quit the strip club because I didn't want to be in that environment and I didn't want to see the man that had sexually assaulted me again. He said, absolutely not. You can't quit. The money is too good. And that's when I broke up with him. I told him that I couldn't be with someone who didn't care enough about me and only really cared about the money and to be kept. He was so comfortable with me paying for everything and him just chilling at a job where he got paid $8 an hour while I was busting my butt every single night. He told me I would never find anyone better than him. The breakup was amicable, thank God. He didn't stress me out or anything. He kind of said, you know, you'll be back. Of course, I never went back. Know your worth and be with someone who actually cares about you. Story time of when I got sexually assaulted at the strip club I worked at. Now, I have many story times because I worked as a cocktail waitress, model, and actress in Los Angeles for a long time. So I have many stories of people who decided to try to take advantage of me. So I want to share them with you guys. In my last story time, so many people started opening up in the comments about their own experiences. So here we go. In 2011, I got hired as a cocktail waitress at this strip club called Deja Vu. I lived in Valley Village and the strip club was in the valley. So it was about a mile away from me. It was the perfect situation. I loved it. It was a fun environment. I got along with everyone. But two months in, there was always this man that used to come in with his friends and he had a dedicated cocktail waitress. So I never got the chance to serve him but one day she showed up late so I decided to go serve him myself and when I went to his table he was nice didn't say much but everyone knew of this guy as a really powerful rich guy right away he gave me a hundred dollars and told me to sit down next to him so I did I sat down I took their order and then so he asked me my name I tell him and then he tells me to go get the drinks but before I leave he gives me another hundred dollars so at this point he's given me two hundred dollars and I didn't realize that what he was trying to do was doing he was preparing me for what was to come in other words he had paid me now he could do whatever he wanted so I go get the drinks, I come back to the table, and he asked me to sit again. By the way, his friends are still at the table, right there in front of us. And I sit down, he starts asking me a bunch of questions, I feel uncomfortable, so I start getting up to leave, and then he grabs me by the shoulders and sticks his tongue down my throat, and if that wasn't disgusting enough, he grabs my you-know-what down there and starts fondling me. If you've never been handled like this, you guys, it's a extremely, extremely shocking experience to be handled like that. Like, for a second, you're just like, what? what's happening? What do I do? All I did, or all I could do, was push him away. And once I got free of his hold, he looks at me in shock and says, what are you doing? I paid you. So I literally ran away from the table. I can hear his friends laughing, cackling at me like this was such an entertaining part of their night. And the guy was just yelling at me, asking me to come back to him. I didn't. I ran away. My knees were buckling. I was sweating. And I ran straight to the security guard who usually had my back. I told him what happened and he's like, hey, look, we can't tell this guy to leave because the club is scared of him because he's a drug runner. He's a well-known drug runner. So I ran over to the back room. I happened to come across the server who usually uh, serves him and I tell her what happened and she was just like, oh, don't worry. He's just like that. And he usually gives me $2,000 a night. You should have stayed. I was in shock, like complete shock. I went home. I cried for freaking days. I didn't go back to the club. And when I finally did, two weeks later, I met my abusive ex. Story time of when my best friend set me up to get sexually assaulted. I was 13 at the time and I didn't have many friends in the school because I was bullied a lot because I was a model and I came out on the local newspaper and in magazines and stuff like that. I also was really afraid of people not liking me so I never stood up for myself. Anyway, this one really popular girl in my class decided to befriend me one day and I was really appreciative and I really liked her and she was kind of like the queen bee, the mean girl, she had all the control over the guys and I was like I want to be like that but I was never able to be like her because I just didn't have the balls. Anyway, so at this point we were like friends for about two months, I would go over her house, she would come over to mine but she she was never really like a best friend. She was like a friend to my face, but then like I would find out she was talking bad about me. So anyway, she invited me to her house one day and I show up and there's all these like older strange boys that I don't know about. Come back for part two. Part two of my best friend setting me up. So I'm in her house with a bunch of strange boys and three girls from my class. So I at least knew some of the girls that were there. We were in her garage and the door was closed and we were all playing ping pong. Suddenly, everyone runs out and they all leave me alone with one of the boys. They close the door and they lock it and I could tell that they locked it. So I quickly ran toward the door and he stopped me and he began telling me that he really liked me and that he had noticed me around school and if I wanted to be with him. And then he started trying to kiss me and do other things to me. But I pushed him away, I ran toward the door, and my best friend was right uh, right there on the other side, obviously listening. And then she opens the door and she's like, calm down, relax, because at that point I was hitting the door. And then she basically accused me of lying and overreacting, and then I just went.
about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 14 and in eighth grade. And we're gonna call my best friend Ashley. Ashley was really nice at first. She always had my back when I needed her. But then out of nowhere, she started being super rude to me. She turned into one of those pick me girls that would always make fun of you in front of other guys, talk crap about you to the guy that you liked. Well, the one day I hear her talking shit about me whenever we were in class and everybody could hear her. She was literally on the whole other side of the class. And I asked her, hey, like, why were you talking about me? She was like, no, I was talking about a different girl. And I had a pretty unique name. So I was like, who else in the school could you have been talking about? But I just brushed it off. Well, then we were in algebra class and I heard her talking shit about me again. How I do my makeup so bad and I can never get a boyfriend. Like I'm so ugly and all that stuff. Well, she thought that I wasn't mad at her. So she came up to me the one day and was like, OMG, I have a boyfriend. She's like, he's so cute. He's really popular. He's on the football team. And I was like, girl, whatever. Nobody cares. Until I'm sitting in my first class of the day. And I remember that she made out with my boyfriend last year. I forgave her, of course. But because karma was taking a little bit too long, I figured I had to do something about it myself. So my plan was to hook up with her boyfriend. Do I feel bad about it? Absolutely not. So I went to my school's football game and guess who I saw? My best friend's boyfriend. She couldn't make it that night. She had something to do. So I had him all to myself. So I went up to him. I started flirting with him. And I was like, oh, you should break up with your girlfriend and date me instead. And I also said that she was a bitch and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he was like, why would you say that about your best friend? And he was like, I would never date you. And I had a feeling this would happen. Much. He started flirting with Kate and she was obviously uncomfortable. She told Jack to stop it multiple times and tried to stay away from him. Charlie started getting irritated. Rightly so, Jack was flirting with his wife and being a drunken idiot and told Jack to stop again multiple times. I also tried to get Jack to knock it off and shut up, but he wouldn't and I was honestly pissed off too. Jack got pissed when Charlie tried to intervene. He told Charlie how much he hated him and wished he was dead. Then went off to confess how much he loves Kate and wishes he would have ended up with her. Jack decided to try to kiss and touch Kate. And she freaked out and Charlie was done. He told us both to get the F out. I dragged Jack out of there and I was just shocked and disgusted at his behavior. The next day, Jack told me that he did have feelings for Kate and was resentful of Charlie because of it. He told me that he loved me and would never cheat on me. He was drunk and what he did was a mistake. He apologized over and over again for his behavior, promised me he loved me and wanted to trip for their romantic getaway they canceled because of us. Brother-in-law keeps rejecting our gifts, but we knew he wouldn't say no to this. Then brother-in-law made a TikTok that went mini viral. And now I have family haven't heard from in five years calling us and sending me messages in social media, calling us dingy for being rich and not sharing. We feel a bit guilty, but me more. Am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for not inviting my husband's son to Christmas? My husband, 64, has two kids, a daughter, 35, and son, 31. His daughter lives in a different country but is low contact with us, so we have very little to do with her. Their real mother died when they were both in their teens. His son lives only 15 minutes away, and we see him from time to time. He is not a bad guy, just very different to my husband and I. I also have a son of my own, 41. He is a very successful stockbroker, while my husband's son is a moderately successful photographer. My son is married with three kids, while my husband's son is still single. This usually causes problems over Christmas, as I like to spend it with my son and his family, and I expect my husband to join. We invited his son along four years ago, and even though he did try to fit in, it just wasn't a good fit. He thought it appropriate to show up in jeans and a t-shirt. I was so embarrassed I could hardly look anyone in the eyes. Ever since that year, we decided not to invite him again. This never seemed to be an issue until this year. We showed up at his home early morning. We had plans to go over to my son's house at around 11, so we didn't really have time. So we just dropped off a gift for him and left. He bought nothing for us. Later that day, my husband texted him to ask him to ask if he had enjoyed the rest of Christmas. To which he replied, All right, that's what today was. Thanks for the chocolate and three minute visit. My husband was very upset by this, but I was outraged. I wanted to contact him and put him in his place, but my husband took my phone away and told me to let it go. It's been two days now. Him and my husband are talking again, and both seem to have just moved past it, but I'm still mad. It's not my fault that he is less successful than my family and just can't fit in with us.
story time about how my boss severely bullied me because she was envious of me. This clearance is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I work at a really high-end nail salon. I'm talking about two to $300 per manicure and pedicure. So it's very high-end and our clientele is very rich. My goal has been to open my own nail salon, but it hasn't happened yet. Obviously, I don't have enough money to open it, so I needed to get a job. This new nail salon had opened up near my house. It was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen in my life, so I definitely wanted to get a job there. I went in for an interview with the owner of the nail salon. During the interview, she was really nice, but kind of gave off that Queen Bee vibe. Like, she was the popular girl and she didn't want anyone else to be popular or pretty. I got a call from her a week later and she asked me if I could do her nails to see how well I did. And when I did her nails, she was impressed. She said that I was really good and that I was hired immediately. I started working and within the first month I had the biggest clientele list. A lot of clients were asking for me to do their nails. And when other clients heard the other clients asked for me, they also started asking for me. You know, word of mouth. I was extremely proud of myself. Not only was I making a lot of money, but I was actually building a clientele base that really loved my work. Don't get me wrong, the other girls at the salon were actually really good. And so was the owner. If we were really busy, sometimes the owner would pick up any walk-in clients. And one of the walk-in clients came in and asked specifically for me. The owner told her that I was busy and that she would do her nails. That's when the girl said that she would come back whenever I was available. My boss quickly snapped at the girl and told her that she was just as good as I was. The worst part was that she said it loud enough so that everyone in the salon could hear her. The client clearly felt uncomfortable but agreed to it anyway. Later that day on my break, I could hear my boss talking in the kitchen. I decided to wait outside and see what she was saying. Sure enough, she was talking about me and telling one of the other girls that I thought I was too pretty for this job and that I didn't have any experience. She also said that I probably just watched YouTube videos in order to learn. Number one, I have 10 years of experience. And number two, it doesn't matter if you watch YouTube videos as long as you're learning. This obviously hurt my feelings and I tried not to cry. Then I realized that she did it on purpose. She was speaking really loud for the entire week and she actually turned out to be pretty good at nails. The following week, she was even taking on clients for gel manicures. Now, I thought this was gonna make my boss upset, but it actually made her really happy. Finally, I see that everyone's starting to pack up their stuff to leave early. I asked one of the girls what was happening and she said that everyone was going to dinner together. I said, oh, okay. And she said, weren't you told? Uh, no, I was not told. I knew this was another intimidation slash bullying tactic from my boss. My boss had even invited the new girl and not me. They all left, went to dinner, and my boss pretended not to even see me when she was leaving. The following day, I come into work and one of my clients is already waiting for me. We sit down at the table and my client begins to tell me that my boss was talking trash about me before I came in and that she even did it in front of the clients. She informed me that my boss was talking trash about my body, my hair and my clothes and that I was basically a JLo knockoff. I quit on the spot and took all my clients with me, over 22 women. I opened my own salon two months later. I'm now her competition. She sent me a message apologizing, but I haven't responded. What should I say? I'm 57 and my son, 28, recently approached me upset about something his sister, 30, told him and supported her for years and I think she's putting all the blame on me slash making me look bad to my son and not taking responsibility. I'm upset with her sneaky behavior and want to confront her but my husband said to leave it. My daughter had a wonderful childhood and I hate that she's complaining about the past behind my back. We did our best and we did help her. She has never mentioned anything to me about still being resentful. Am I the asshole in this situation? My 23 male asexual girlfriend, 22 female of two years, has ceased all forms of physical contact since I told her I'm okay with her sexuality. She also lied to me. Should I break up? Girlfriend, 22 female of two years, tells me, 23 male, she is asexual when we moved in together. She said she'd still continue to satisfy me sexually and that she loves me as a person and not my body. I felt insecure initially as I felt I am unattractive, but the general consensus of close friends and the commenters were to go forward with the relationship because she was willing to compromise, which I did. Anyhow, things have changed a lot since then. I researched and tried to learn more about asexuality and tried my best to make myself comfortable with it. But lately, she has been rebuffing all forms of physical contact such as hugs, holding hands, and pretty much anything. I thought she was doing this because she needed space and I did not try to initiate any physical contact. The last time we had sex was two months ago and her go-to dialogue is that God gave you hands so you can help yourself if I try to initiate. For context, I have a low libido and only feel randy around once every 10 to 15 days. We sleep on the same bed, but I'm not allowed to touch her. She just takes my hand away or makes some distance between us if I get close. But the rest of the relationship is pretty sound, and I love her and I like to think that she does too. I tried to hold her hand when we went for a walk yesterday, and she was visibly disgusted. I immediately withdrew my hand and haven't really talked to her since. I am really hurt, and it has incredibly affected my self-esteem. I slept in the hall last night and woke up to a text from her best friend, 22 female, friends since they were 7 years old, who basically cussed at me for not accepting her for who she was and not respecting her. I tried to make her see my side of the equation, but she refused to listen, so I just agreed with her. On some further discussion, I learned that she has been aware of her asexuality ever since she was 15. This is where the betrayal comes in. She told me that she only discovered her asexuality recently. She had been lying about herself all along. 
At first about being attracted to me and then about her sexuality. I feel like I've been duped and that she betrayed me. If she would have told me about her sexuality beforehand, I would have considered it and come to terms with it or maybe not continued it, sparing us a lot of heartaches. Also, she has not delivered on the promise of keeping me sexually satisfied. I am really considering making her move out. I own the place and breaking up with her. But before doing it, is what I feel justified? Am I right to feel this way? If not, what should I do? Also, is this relationship salvageable? Is anything worth saving? I told my 36 female husband, 37 male, that we should get a divorce so he can marry his late wife's tombstone. I married my husband 10 years ago. Prior to our relationship, he had been married for two years to L, 22 female. Sadly, she passed away because of an ongoing health issue. I met my husband five years after her passing. At the beginning of our relationship, I had some issues with his romantic history. To put it bluntly, I was having trouble accepting my husband's past and that he did not stop loving his late wife, but was forced to do so. I went to therapy for a year to treat that and I managed to overcome this issue. I now like to say that Elle and I would have been best friends. The issue, after 10 years of marriage, we have been having a lot of arguments derived from bad communication. We just seem to blow everything out of proportion. About three months ago, every time we have an argument, he takes the car and goes away for hours. When I asked where he went, he told me he, quote, went to see her, meaning Elle. Now this is very weird from him because he, at best, visits Elle's grave three times a year. I then asked him, to not run away every time we fight, and to please tell me when he goes to the cemetery so we can go together. He just brushed me off. He has been doing this for months now, and it is destroying me. The feelings I fought the first year of our relationship are coming back. I'm sad all the time, I cry at night, but my husband just keeps going away for hours. At this point, I think he is doing it out of spite more than anything else. Yesterday, I reached my limit. We fought over freaking trash. That's how petty our arguments are. He took the car at 4 p.m., returned at 11 p.m. I was waiting for him at the dining room. The convo went like this. Where were you? I visited her again. I've told you multiple times about how your actions hurt me and you continue to do them. You can't stop me from going. Well, we can get a divorce. That way you can marry Elle's tombstone, being that you care more about it than our marriage. I could see the shock in his face when I said that. I apologized immediately, but I think he did not hear me. I saw how he started crying. You see around. 